Hello everyone. I hope you're having a really good week. This week I am at camp with some of our kids from church. And it's been kind of a rainy week, but we've had a really good time learning about Jesus this week. And hopefully I'll get to share with you in my next story time about some of our experiences that we've had at camp this week. Well, I'm back with you for our last lesson that we are going to have in July about the parts of our body and how we can glorify God in our bodies. You know, we've talked about our eyes, we've talked about our ears, we talked about our brain, we talked about our stomach. Today we're going to finish up all of the lessons with our hands and our feet. Those are the most visible parts of our body that God has given us to uh, serve Him and to glorify Him in everything that we do and everywhere we go. So, I know that some of you are getting ready to go back to school here really soon. And I, I'm going to be praying for you all as you go back to school. And we'll have some lessons too in August to kind of help us think about ways that we could glorify God when we go back to school. But today as we finish up, I can't believe we're at the end of July already and we're getting ready to move into August. But today um, we're going to look at some scriptures to start out with and read some of the ways that uh, God has given us information about in the Bible to help us to know how we can glorify God in our bodies. And I'm going to start out by reading a passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. So if you want to follow along with me, that's in the New Testament. It's one of the letters that Paul wrote to a church in Corinth. Um, it's kind of in the middle of the New Testament. So we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and I'm going to read verses... Um, 17 and then 19 through 20. And this is what it says. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Do you know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. So therefore glorify God in your body. And we're going to move on to... 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 17. And this is what it says there. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? And I'm going to read on in verses 13 through 20. But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just where he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. And God gave us these parts of our body, uh, if you go over and read in chapter 24, to honor him and to give glory to him. And so that's what we should do with our bodies. God gave us our body the way it is for a purpose. And now if we read over in James, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Let me go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. This is what it says there. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And then James chapter 4, verse 8. It says, Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Um, humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. And then over in the Old Testament, I want to read a couple of verses to you. Isaiah 52, 7 says, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, and who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. And then last but not least, Job chapter 11, verses 13 through 15. It says, yet if you devote your heart to him and stretch out your hands to him, if you put away the sin that is in your hand and allow no evil to dwell in your tent, then free of fault, you will lift up your face and you will stand firm and without fear. God has a purpose for each and every one of us, and he wants us to glorify him in our bodies and to do the things that are honoring and pleasing. 
you know, we can do those things just when we go to church on Sunday morning or when we're around other church people or our parents. But we need to glorify God and act like Jesus everywhere we go, not just in places where we think it's important. The reason that we should live out our lives glorifying God is so that others may see Jesus in us and want to follow and do the same things that we do. And they may have questions about, why do you act this way? And you know, people can see when you are following along and you are living a life that reflects Jesus, then it is evident to everyone around you that you are different than they are. And I'm going to read to you a story from Acts chapter 3. And I'm going to kind of sum it up because it's kind of a long passage. But in this passage, it talks about Peter and John. This is before uh, the church really got started. Peter and John were out walking, going to the temple to worship God at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And on the way, when they were coming in, there was a lame man who someone would carry this lame man every day and place him outside of the gate to the temple where he could beg for the people going into the temple uh, so that he could have food to eat and uh, any medicine that he needed to take care of himself. And he would do this every day. Well, one day when Peter and John came into the temple, this man asked them, he said, they, they looked at him and he said to them, do you have any money to give me? And Peter and John kind of looked at each other and they're like, we don't have any money, but, but look at us. And then Peter said, silver and gold we don't have, but what I do have, I give you. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, walk. And you know what? He took that man by the hand. He helped him stand. And you know what that man did? He went away walking and leaping and praising God. And all of the people there saw this happen. And they were amazed. And they gave glory to God. You know, that's a healing. That's a spectacular kind of miracle thing. But in the same way, we can help others. And when we choose to do that, then others will see that. And they will glorify God for us helping someone who is in need. That's what we can use our hands and our feet for. We need to serve Jesus in a way that other people might see and have an opportunity to know about who we follow and why we've chosen to follow Jesus. You know, we might not be called on to do a great miracle. We might need to just help someone maybe carry their groceries out to their car or hold a door open for them or take their garbage out to the street for them. You know, there are little ways that we can reflect God in our daily lives. And you can do that when you go to school. You can help others by being a friend maybe to that person who doesn't have a lot of friends or being helpful when someone needs your help. Think about this. Some people will never, ever, ever go to church or ever, ever, ever read the Bible. But when they look at our lives and they see Jesus in us, then we may be the only Bible that some of these people ever read. So that means we have a big responsibility as a believer to show others who Jesus is by being Jesus with skin on. You know, we, we can't see Jesus. He's not visible. He's not here with us like he was here on the earth with the disciples. But he is here with us in spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in each and every one of us. And we can use the Holy Spirit, the, the equipping that God gives to us, to do the things that we might think are impossible to do. You know, just a few years ago, I couldn't have seen myself uh, being in this position and speaking to you all online like I am right now. But God equips us to do the things that he calls us to do. He doesn't ask us to do anything on our own and leave us to figure it out for ourselves. He helps us. And you know, you know how we get helped? You know how I know that he does this for me? 
I spend time with God and I pray and I ask him to help me to say the things that he wants me to say or to do the things that he needs me to do. So I want you to think about this this week. How much time do you spend with God? Do you have a daily Bible time or a quiet time or even a prayer time? I want to challenge you to do that. And I also want to challenge you to start hiding God's word in your heart. Now that sounds fancy, but it's really not. Here's what that entails. Pick some verses in scripture that are important to you. You know, sometimes God brings to my mind a scripture when someone has a question or a need. God might put a scripture in my head. And I remember it, and I am able to use God's word to help other people. So the only way I can do that is that by memorizing scripture. Now, maybe you think, well, I can't memorize scripture. But you can. Just like you can learn the words of a song or a poem. Or maybe you could even quote your favorite movie or your favorite story to a friend word for word. Well, we can do the same with God's word. And one of the ways that I've found that helps me sometimes to learn and remember a scripture is to put it to a familiar tune. So a couple of years ago, I had a, a opportunity to learn a scripture verse from James. And they sang the song to the tune of Three Blind Mice. And so I'm going to sing it with you you all. I just, we just had thunder. I don't know if you heard that, but it's thundering here again. But uh, this is the words of the scripture from James 1 to the tune of Three Blind Mice. It says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Do what it says. Not very good. I'm not good singing without having music playing for me. But you can do it. You can put it to even your own. You can make up your own words. Your own tune. And you can sing that so that you know what the verse says. And you can use it when you need it. So, since I'm at camp, i got to go here in a few minutes to go pick up my kids. But I just wanted to spend some time with you all this week. And I hope that you've had a really good week, and I hope that you will come back and join me next week when we will have another story time. Let's pray, and I'll end with prayer, and I'll see you next week. Dear God, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you that you are glorified when we do the things that help others, that serve others, that please you, that honor you. Lord, help us to remember that we don't have to be like disciples like Peter and John. We are your disciples. We are your followers. And that if you ask us to do something, even if we think it's impossible, we know that you will give us the power and the ability and the tools that we need to do that job. So watch over us, protect us, and help us to have a great week and help us as we go back to school to remember that we need to glorify you wherever we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye for now.